praise the Lord. I'm so excited that every one of us is here today, and uh, usually this is not my comfortable um, zone, but funny I said zone, but um, so you, um, I was called to um, preach on the call of and evidence of intimacy with God, and so usually I don't know. Many of us have been to wedding ceremonies, and my favorite part of a wedding is when the bride walks down the aisle, and um, the bride looks at the groom, and the groom looks at the bride too as well. And so, you know what, what I like about that is that nobody else matters at that point in time. The bride is just looking and saying, I don't even care if you like him or not, I already chose him, I'm already like gonna marry him, so it's like, you, have, you don't have no say in that. And so um, at the moment she's declaring to the congregation that I am choosing him and I don't care what you think about him. And our eyes are focused on him and him alone. So um, that made me remember um, a song from one of my favorite musicians. The song goes like this. Um, give me dove eyes, give me undivided attention. And so why am I saying this is, you know, um, it's not the only, the, uh, it's not only the Holy Spirit that's compared to a dove. Even us, the Bible said in Songs of Solomon, I can't really remember where it says, it said, give me dove's eyes, give me undivided attention. What that means is like, if you know the, if you know what the dove, the, for instance, sorry, excuse me. So um, one thing with the dove is when the dove is looking, they can see straight ahead. I can't see, um, Auntie Christy, right to my right, and I can't see Elizabeth. I'm just looking straight. I can see Sister Toyin, and no one else. It's I'm not thinking about anybody. And so that's what um, God wants us to do. God wants us to have that intimate relationship with Him that we're not even worried about anyone else. And so that level of intimacy just comes. It doesn't come in a day. I remember a show I, used, I saw on TV. Um, it's called um, Married at the First Sight or something. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, that's interesting, though. But that level of intimacy does not come one day. It comes while you grow in that relationship with Christ. And so um, I'm going to read from Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10. If someone wants to read that for me, that would be awesome. Okay, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, um, My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. And I'll go ahead to 14. It says, O oh, my dove, in the cleft of the rock, in the secret place of the cleave, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. And you know what? God wants us to have that relationship with Him. It's not like He wants us to be really close. Um, just being you born again is not just enough. We have to grow in intimacy with God. We have to grow to know and to love him. And um, it's funny enough that when we come to Christ, we, c um, we can just decide, okay, that's, this is all it is. No, 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 it's not. So, um, so I was uh, looking at what's the definition of intimacy. It says, um, in somebody said, intimacy is... Um, uh, is defined as into me see. It is the ability to be vulnerable, to know another person while being known as well. It involves sharing hopes, pains, dreams, and nightmares. It is the mutual training that binds the heart together. Um, let me use an example. For instance, Caroline, myself and Caroline, how we get, to, if the more we talk, the more we relate. The more, um, if somebody tells her, oh, Nikkei did this particular thing, she'll be like, oh, oh no, I know Nikkei that much. She's not going to do that. So it comes knowing God more. And how do we get to know God? We get to know him th through worship, through prayer, through spending time with him. So um, then, so the, okay, how do we come to the place of intimacy? I have some points. It says the first step is taking the first step by giving your life to Jesus. It does not stop there. God's priority for us is to get to know him intimately and focus on him. 
And um, secondly, we nurture the relationship with God. Um, if I'm going to be vulnerable, and I know I've given my life to Christ for some time now, and I would say that this year, to, for me personally, it's been the year that I grew more intimately with Christ. And why, 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 why did I say that? It's because I didn't get to nurture my relationship with God. And so, if you look at um, Hollywood couples, when they get the verse, the first thing they say is, um, we grew apart. What they're really saying is, um, we, don't get, we don't know each other intimately more again. We, 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 we haven't, like, we just grew apart. So, when they say that, so, for us, the call is, God is calling us to come closer to him, to draw in the place of intimacy with him. We should not get distracted about anything that's going on around us. Focus on God more and more. And so, um, how do we know what's the evidence that of our intimacy? So, I'm going to ask us a question. What is your evidence of intimacy with Christ? So, um, the first evidence of intimacy is that you become naked before your creator. What do I mean? When Isaiah saw the Lord, he said, Woe is me, and a man of unclean lips, and I do among unclean people. So when the first step is you see yourself as God sees you, you probably think, oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm better. But when you come before God, it's like, okay, no, uh-uh. I need you to, like, deal with this attitude. I need to, you to deal with pride. And so God, in the place of intimacy, you see, you see your flaws, and you, and you can trust God with your naked nakedness as well so um secondly for people to know that for there's an evidence of intimacy people have to see you talk more about god when you close when you, when you have an intimate relationship with god you talk you talk more about god you every your conversation is about god and so i'm giving an example of for instance i don't know how many of you have been uh, with people that have been in love or are in love for, for instance, a lady, and um, they tend to talk about the guy they're in love with, and they could, it could just be um, they're talking. Somebody, you're talking about the trash can or trash can, and they'll find a way to like bring that conversation back to the guy. They'll be like, oh, for instance, say, oh, oh, that trash can, uh, something I don't really like. You say, oh my, you know, um, David, um, you know, David, he, uh, the kind of trash can he likes. So every conversation. Comes. You can talk about the bathroom sink, and they'll be like, oh, David. Is like, okay, yeah, we get it. You love David. Yeah, so we lo you love David. And um, so number three is if you say you have an intimate relationship with God, there should be a fragrance of that relationship. People should be able to perceive it. So uh, one example is um, the disciples. When they came out, people were like, oh, they've been with Jesus. They've really been with Jesus. And so another example that comes to my mind is, like, if you're in the kitchen all day, so somebody's going to know that you're in the kitchen because you smell of it. So if you've said you've been in the presence of God, you should smell of the presence of God. So um, number four, say, as, um, you should look and talk like Christ. And um, I don't know, for me, I know, okay, I'm going to use my, my parents. Um, and my mom is lighter than my dad. But for some reason, I think they look alike. And so I think that comes um, when you become one with somebody. The Bible says you become one flesh. So, for instance, I feel like Pastor Nose and Pastor N looks alike. Um, that's my opinion. But it's just because there's that one coming together of one flesh. So when you have a relationship, when you have an intimate relationship with Christ, you should talk and you should look like Christ. In everything you do, people should know that you, you, you've been with Jesus. You've had that relationship, personal relationship with Christ. And um, one other thing, an example of being an, in a um, relationship, having an intimate relationship with God is um, you tend to see God's needs as your own needs. Um, what that, okay, I'll give you a reason. For instance, um, there's a, God forbid, there's a shooting somewhere around. And usually the man takes the bullet. 
the man that loves his wife, for I'm just using it, the man that loves his wife, takes a bullet for the wife. So he's trying to protect his wife. And so when you love Christ and when you're in an intimate relationship with Christ, whatever, um, whatever it's Christ needs becomes your need. And um, there's this preacher in England, I don't know if I'm getting his name right, that lived for a long century, John Knox. He said, um, God, I pray that you give me Scotland or I die. You know why he said that? Because he saw that the greatest need of God is for um, people to come to Christ. And you know when you have that intimate relationship with Christ, you're like, oh, no, God, whatever, whatever you want, I want. Whatever you desire, I desire. Your desire becomes my desire. And so um, I, was, I was talking to God the other day. I said, I desire to be married, but I've come to that place that my, I love Christ that much. And whatever, even if he does, God, yeah, but, but even though he doesn't want, like, even, the, even though he says, okay, no, you know what, it's me and you. But I've come to that place that, God, whatever you want, I want. So I don't, like, we, we all have to get to that point in our relationship with God. Like, see, God, I don't care if you're not, if you're not going to bless me with this or that. I'm okay with it as long as I have that deep relationship with you. So um, lastly, an evidence of intimacy is the physical evidence of the fruit of the Spirit of God in our lives. When a man becomes intimate with his wife, um, the normal progression of things is that she becomes pregnant and there's a fruit involved. So if you say you love God or you're intimate with God and there's no fruit of the Spirit with you, then we question your intimacy with God. So if you're not walking in love, if you're not walking in joy, if you're not walking in peace, then you really don't have an intimacy with God. So right now, I just pray. My prayer for all of us is that we grow in intimacy with Jesus and we grow in loving him more. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. For you.